Our opening hymn can be found at number 217. We will sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today's Mass is offered in memory of Claudio Dragonetti and Dave Burnell. David Burns, David, for his one-year anniversary. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, in his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
A reading from the letter of John. Beloved, see what the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do, know, we do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A, re a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peter, he is a bad boy, definitely. So there's a lot of times that we, we hear about Peter, and he doesn't seem very friendly. Peter is talking with the people, and he's blaming them for killing God. 
this is really this is a really serious accusation, right? This is not a very friendly approach that he's he's using with the, the Jewish people. Can you imagine Peter? You know, tell, you know, at one point he's telling, you know, telling Jesus, Jesus is going to cause problems. You know, can you imagine Peter's friends coming up to Peter and saying, Peter, uh, slow down. You're going, you're going too far. Right? We can hear it. We can imagine his friends saying this to him. You know, you're going you're to get yourself killed if you keep this up. Right? And Peter's response, yes. And you know what happened? They killed him. He was killed. Remember the song from a TV show, uh, the song Bad Boys, right? Bad Boys, Bad Boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you, right? That song, remember that? If you're old enough to remember that from uh, Cops, right? And this is what's going on with Peter, right? He's going out, he's preaching to the people, and they killed him. They came, they, they came for him, and they, they got him, and they killed him. Jesus had, when he had begun his public ministry, there was one day, Jesus, he says, this, you know, he says uh, in a very strong way, teaching, very brave, if you want to follow me, you have to accept your, own, your cross. Every day, you have to accept your cross to follow me. And at that moment, what happened, Peter says, Jesus, hey, you know, you, you got to relax a little bit. You're going too far. You're doing. You're going too. You, you're too much. This is too much. You're going to scare people away. It's you know, it's it's scary. These things you're saying to us. You got to you got to stop. Peter's saying this to Jesus, and Peter. Do you remember remember what, what Jesus says to Peter? When Peter tells Jesus, you, you got you got to. You gotta take it easy here, you know, and Jesus is saying, "You know, we gotta take you gotta take up your cross if you're gonna follow me." You know, Peter's telling him this is too much, and Jesus says to Peter, "Do you remember? Does anybody remember what Jesus says? Do you remember, Mary, Mary Rose? You remember? Yeah, get back, Satan! Right? This is what Jesus says to Peter. You remember? Right? Of course, you remember, right? And Jesus says this to Peter. He's telling you, you're wrong." I'm right, and he's very blunt, strong worded to Peter. Get back, Satan. You know, telling Peter, yeah, this is the devil and you're talking, right? And Peter was, oh, oh, okay. And, you know, he, <laughs> he realizes he's wrong. And then later, Jesus is crucified, and Peter wants to be brave, wants to be strong. He's like, I will follow you uh, to death. And, and he's very, it's very strong words. But then we know what Peter did. He did not follow through with that. He denied Jesus. How many times did he deny Jesus, everyone? Three times. You're right, right. Three times he denied. Even though he had the right words, I'm going to follow you to the death, he didn't. And people, they said, hey, aren't you with Jesus? No, no, I'm not with Jesus. That's not me. You got the wrong guy. But now... Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, and he is not afraid. He is not afraid of death now. He welcomes death, and he continues to preach. He saw Jesus' death and resurrection. He saw Jesus himself beat death, beat the grave. And Jesus he is merciful to Peter, and Peter is not afraid. People we know are full of, of the truth, and are not afraid when when Peter was captured and imprisoned and tortured and beaten. He was filled with joy. He was jumping with joy. And it was one day, uh, 
Jesus tells his disciples when he tells when he he teaches them the beatitudes on the mount blessed are you when people persecute you say you know uh, false things about you in my name blessed are you because you receive your reward in heaven right we remember the beatitudes and in the first reading today, we see this. Peter gets it. He sees the light. He understands. And he's joyous. He's happy. When he's persecuted, he is full of joy. And we need to be the same. We need to understand and accept God's plan for us. Now, in the gospel today, we see Jesus telling the people, some people, are already involved with the church. Some people, you know, are benefiting from, from the ministry. They're going to church. We know this. And, the, you know, and there are different ways that we benefit from going to church and, you know, like feel good about ourselves and positive and receive all kinds of benefits. And other people... We might, you know, find friends or work, jobs, you know. You know, have a good, you know, people might go to church for personal benefit. But if a person goes to church and they're involved with the church for their own personal gain, for their personal benefit, um, they tend to leave the church. They'll think, yeah, what's the point? You know, what am I, what am I going to get out of it? What's, what, what's in it for me if I go to the church? Some people won't go to church because of that, uh, that feeling, that attitude. We need to go to church because we need to feel God's calling and to, to serve other people, to serve each other. We all need each other. No one is... 100% independent. We depend on each other and other people. We're not, we can't do it all on our own. And that's service. That's serving. And that's sacrifice as well. Once in a while, you know, get up in the morning feeling, you know, I don't want to go to church. I mean, priests do too. You're not alone sometimes. Someone, someone, we get up too and, you know, maybe we're exhausted or if not feeling great. Oh, I want to go to church. We're not different from you in, in that way. But we don't say no. Because we have, we, we come. We come for you. Even though, of course, even though times when we might not feel great. Sacrifice for the flock. Peter understood. He got it. He wanted to preach. He wanted to sacrifice and spread the church so it would grow. He spread the good news so that it would help people. He wanted to sacrifice. He wanted to become a sacrifice. Recently we had our, our bishop, Cardinal Sean O'Malley. He wrote a letter telling people, warning people, that you can't allow the state of Massachusetts to make, do, uh, to allow doctor-assisted suicide. Because you shouldn't do it, it's, it's bad, and it should not be allowed. That was his letter, and this is true. This is, this is, so this was the point of his letter to the state. And it's honest. As some people, they said, you know, you, that's stupid, that's wrong, you don't understand, you're making people paranoid for no reason why you put out this letter. Doctors are just trying to help the people. They're so nice. Kind of Sean, they're so nice. You don't understand, you don't get it. Oh, the bishop, the Cardinal Sean is just crazy. He's old. He's behind the times. He's writing this letter. He just he doesn't understand science, the science behind it. All these things that people said that kind of abusive and negative talk about Cardinal Sean. And he was joyous to receive it. 
all that criticism, all that negativity, he was joyous. He's not in it because he's not in it for personal gain, which some people are, you know. Some people will preach for money. Of course, this is not what our cardinal is doing. That's not him. And yes, he has to be, you know, he's saying doctor-assisted suicide is not okay. If people stop, you know, maybe giving money to the church, it's still he's, because of his letter, it's sacrifice, and he is joyous for it because he is speaking the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pope, the Pope, Pope Francis, recently, he sent out a letter as well to the entire world teaching about um, transgender issues. He said, it's not, it's transgender is having surgery is not a good thing. And he said, surrogacy is also not a good thing and should not happen. It's, it's always a bad thing. And many people, again, to, to Pope Francis said, pope, the Pope is mean and he's, he's stupid. He doesn't understand. He doesn't get it. He does, again, all this negativity. He does, there's ways of love. He's full of, you know, he hate and all these things. And they were accusing him of, you know, the worst things imaginable because of what he spoke in his letter. As he created a lot of enemies because of that letter. However, he is filled with joy and celebrates. And we celebrate the Pope and like as we did with Peter and Jesus, that they spoke the truth, their truth, and Jesus' truth. And Pope Francis follows in that tradition as well. And this is good. Remember Peter. He seemed like a crazy person, right? But did his program work? It did. And the church grew. So when we're here, continuing what Peter did. My students up at UMass Lowell, you know, we have discussions and share stories about how, you know, their experiences, how they experience abuse, uh, you know, criticism from teachers in class who would say, you know, awful negative things about the church in college classes. And they felt, you know, this is, felt like they were stuck because, you know, they had to listen to the teachers say these bad things about church. And they would say, you know, the church is stupid. It's, you know, uh, it's the, everyone who goes to church, they're bad people and they don't get it. And the students, you know, express what that's like. There was a, a young woman who said, members of, you know, Members of a team, you know, that they go to church. You know, oh, they were saying that the sports team had to go to church, and this woman said, why would I ever go to church? You know, you go to church? I'm not, you can't make me do that. And it was just kind of negative thing. And so they said, okay, bye, and they went, you know, went to church. So one of the, one of the young men, a strong Catholic, uh, his mother criticized him for going to church. His own, his mother. So, what are you going to church for? You don't need to go to church. You know, it's just, and just listed off this list of negative things associated with people who go to church. To her son. The mother's, you know, he's receiving this from his mother. And it's, it's an awful thing, you know. You know. Students, you know, are upset. They're, you know, they worry. They're not, you know, they're not afraid. Really, the, the students at Below, happy and joyous. They're happy when people criticize them for going to church, for their belief, for their faith. It's like Peter and Jesus. They carry it on. It shows us that we are not going to, again, not going, we don't come to church for personal gain. What are we going to get out of it? We come to church for the right reason to serve each other, to serve our brothers and sisters, to stand up to the truth and to serve the glory of God, his truth here on earth. So anyway, I hope you all know how much we appreciate your coming to church, coming here today and our time today to show how, 
the strength of our faith, your very strong faith will get you through this life. And you'll show the world the truth in coming to church. People will criticize you. They'll give you a hard time because you come to church. I hope they don't kill you like we saw with Peter, right? But you will have joy. Joy when people hate you for your faith, you will have joy. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the Pope's monthly intention that the dignity and immense value of women be recognized in every culture and for the end of the discrimination that they experience in different parts of the world. We pray to the Lord. For Cardinal Sean, our Archbishop. that his leadership of the Archdiocese of Boston continue to preserve and succeed through challenging times. We pray to the Lord for our political leaders, that they heed the calling of God to build a culture of life beginning with natural conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord For our united efforts to support the Catholic appeal, that our parish programs and ministries be enriched here at St. Jude's as we move forward in faith. We pray to the Lord for all the soldiers on active duty and the first responders that they persevere in faith this Easter season. We pray to the Lord For those being held hostage, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, 
that they be strengthened by the hope of the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord for world peace, especially conflicts in the Middle East and in Russia, Ukraine. We pray to the Lord and for our beloved who have gone before us, May they find a new home in the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers and answering them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. your 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Cardinal Sean our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Claudio Dragonetti and Dave Burns, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I forgot to introduce a very special guest we have today. This is Father Joe Bruce is here with us, joining us today. Welcome, Father Joe. We're so happy to have you here with us. Father Joe is a Jesuit priest. He lives at Boss, uh, BC High School. 
I know some of you go to BC, some, some people here go to BC High School, right? Some of you, and he, well, he lives there. He doesn't work there. He works at the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester. And he's responsible for the Deaf Catholic Archives Department. All, uh, so all the history of deaf, uh, deaf Catholics. He, and Father Jeremy, you know, he, he's involved in that too, right? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Anyway, thank you. Father Joe, thank you for joining us today. We're so thrilled that you could be with us to celebrate. You know, as your pastor, I have a duty to inform you of what's going on here at the parish, in the church. I have to, right? I can't, you can't be left in the dark. You need to know what's going on. So our situation related to uh, our financial situation is, uh, it is challenging. As you know, we have the school right here, and we have, it has been vacant for, uh, since January. Right? So we haven't been receiving any rental income for about the last four months. We do have. Uh, we we are looking at a new school. We recently met with a school. Uh, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, very excited to be working with them. Uh, who were looking, you know, looking to uh, to rent the school. Of course, there's a contract review, and it's not obviously not a very simple procedure to to lease out the school. Um, so the last four months have been very challenging because we haven't had the income. So I wrote in the bulletin. Uh, asking if it's possible for you to consider to pray about increasing your weekly uh, donations to increase the collection. It costs approximately $30,000 a month to run this parish, this church. Yeah, so weekly, about you know, $7,000 a week is what we're looking for to meet our operation co- operational costs. Please, you know, if you have ideas, feedback uh, on ways we can increase our collections or uh, uh, money, uh, you can contact, let us know. We want to hear what you have to say, your ideas. So myself, Father Jeremy, or Anne Marie, who does our, our, our business manager. Um, you know, we, just, we, want, we want to hear your feedback, and we also want to make sure that you're up to date and know what's going on. This is such a beautiful church, and this is a beautiful community, and I've enjoyed certainly getting to know you all since I've come here, and I'm not making it up. I, I do, honestly, I, I really enjoy. And that we have the deaf community here with us as well. So it's just a, a wonderful mix. It's so bright and beautiful and positive, and we want to we keep it going. So let's, if you can help us to, to do that, it'd be great. Now that that's done, after Mass, downstairs in the lower church, the lower hall, at 12 o'clock from 12 to 1, we will have a, just one hour, we will have our first grief support group, 12 o'clock, Downstairs. Then this evening, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we'll have youth ministry. That'll be in the rectory. And there are plenty more announcements in the bulletin, especially this Saturday we have the St. Jude School. Um, they're going to have uh, the reunion. The people who graduated from St. Jude, we're going to have a little reunion for them. Um, that'll be from 12.30 to 3.30. On Saturday, so nice little reunion get together. People who went to the school and um, to celebrate. All right, thank you for paying attention. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Our closing hymn can be found at number 232. Jesus Christ is risen today. triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross. Alleluia. Suffer to redeem our loss. Alleluia.
switch here.